Um, I'm going to start by doing like a kind of basic introduction if no one uh, has basically looked into the topic too much. Um, so at the moment, there's around 1,613 low Earth orbit satellites, uh, which have all been deployed by uh, the most, the largest constellation of uh, satellite networks at the moment, which is called Starlink, uh, which has been deployed by SpaceX. And basically the aim for this is to offer global internet access basically to the entire world. So no matter where you are, they want it so you can have this terminal that allows you to connect to their uh, satellite network. Uh, if you see on the right, there's the image of them current satellites. So that's where they're all deployed. Um, you can see they kind of ignore the polar regions at the moment, uh, primarily because obviously that's not where most of the, um, where, where, where it's needed at the minute. But obviously as the constellations develop, this will be, um, this will be also deployed in them locations. Um, then the characteristics which have been um, shared by uh, SpaceX through the filings uh, shown on the bottom right. So basically that's basically saying there's 72 orbital planes with 22 satellites per plane um, and an altitude of 550 kilometers. The altitude was a lot higher, but I think they, they decided to reduce it mainly to reduce the latencies as well as prevent the risks of collisions. Uh, I mean, as the features of all this are basically, like as I already mentioned this, to reduce the, the latency as well on a whole. And the aggregate capacity is expected to reach multiple terabits per second. So the whole idea of this is to basically take over as the new backbone of the internet. Uh, so each satellite uh, will have two primary forms of communication. Uh, the main one that they want to use is inter-satellite links, uh, where there'll be uh, four satellite links per satellite. Um, on the right, this is a simulation uh, shown by uh, Mark Handley, if you've seen his paper, um, where he similarly creates a simulation model, but he does it for Unity. And this is showing um, his uh, constellation that he's shown in that model. Uh, the advantage of these in satellite links is that they're, that they're not uh, limited by the speed of light uh, in glass like fiber is which allows it to be 47% uh, high speeds. Um, the only downside of this, the Starlink are quite slow in releasing in satellite links because I, I think the, the advancements in technology aren't as quick as they wanted it to be. Uh, therefore, they're using a lot more phased array beams, which is, the, um, which is what's used to connect the satellites to the ground stations. And what they're doing quite a lot at the minute is they're hopping from uh, ground station to satellite to ground station repeatedly uh, where there's no inter-satellite links, uh, which is obviously slightly slower um, as there's a slight path loss due to the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, but all in all, it's still proving to be quite effective. Uh, this is just showing like a very generic uh, coverage of the, uh, like I think 10% 10, 10 of the first stage. Uh, so as you can see, it's prioritizing certain regions such as America and, and UK. So I've already mentioned it a little bit, but there's quite a lot of existing research in this already where they've uh, similarly used uh, their own simulation models. So Hanley created, um, like I said, one in Unity. He uses Dijkstra's shortest path algorithm with link latencies as metrics. Um, other ones such as in the paper network in Heaven and Earth where they also do early stages. But the, what I found when I was researching topics quite difficult because none of, none of these models are obviously open use. Uh, no one else can use them. There's also very little information on really how, how they got it working, etc. which is why I decided it would be great to create a simulation model in Omnit and Inet. So it allows obviously the entire research community to um, test these models and test also their work as well. So that was basically the main objectives of this project. And then by using the simula simulation model, I wanted to reproduce the results that these papers have uh, looked at, not only to validate the simulation model, but also to uh, test the validity of the uh, constellations themselves. Um, so the first step was trying to figure out on how to get the orbital mechanics basically working in the framework to start with. Uh, and we came across the open source satellite simulator model, uh, which was uh, made for the 2015 versions of Omnet and Inet. Um, and they basically work by, they use curl to use uh, actual satellite data, basically, which is TLD, TLD data sets. And using this existing data, which it reads offline, um, it will propagate the orbits on the orbital model. 
Um, so what we needed to do was we needed to port this so it could be used in the latest INET versions, uh, which wasn't too difficult, but it was um, obviously a fair bit of work. Uh, and I'll show you at the very end, but there's a GitHub repository if you want to try this, the new ported uh, framework out. So on top of the porting, uh, we developed a variety of INET models. Uh, these are predominantly physical and transport layer models, uh, which is a unit disk transmitter and transmission model, which I'll get onto in the next couple of slides, uh, as well as a propagation model. Uh, we also developed a routing model, as this is very important. As um, So existing papers, as I mentioned, uh, for example, Handley's, he uses a Deutsch's shortest path algorithm um, because obviously he doesn't, if he wanted, he could do a more realistic routing approach, which is something where something that they might actually use in Starlink. Uh, but it's what their focus is, and what our focus is on our model is to only focus on the latencies and only try to abstract away certain aspects where we don't need to and get just get it working. Which is why routing is important. And there's um, not many ways of doing that in IA already. There is um, like uh, ad hoc routing protocols, but we didn't want to use that as it it didn't really demonstrate uh, what the satellites will use anyway. So we thought um, what we wanted to do is before I get on to is try to use similarly to had is dietaries and running it every X amount of times uh, to get the updated uh, constellation. Uh, and there's also what we want to do is remove the requirement of existing data. Um, so the OS3 framework uses like data off the internet um, of like actual satellite characteristics. But the downside of this is that, is that it prevented us to test um, future constellations as well as um, like constellations that may not exist, et cetera, uh, which was quite a large disadvantage, especially um, as there's not actually all satellites. Um, there were some satellites that we found weren't even on uh, their data. So we wanted to remove this as well. Uh, so this is just an image showing the, the GUI canvas of the OS3 ported. So this isn't the framework. Um, so this is just them moving, updating every, I think, a couple, every 20 seconds. Um, the mobility is updating and the satellites are moving. Um, and this is, I think, uh, about 70% of the current constellation. Uh, so it's, it's quite a lot of it. Um, so I mentioned before, um, we decided to use unit disk radio models. Um, we've had a quite a lot of people asking why you're using this one, using a more complicated uh, model, uh, because there's a lot more complicated models we could have used, such as the AEPSK radio models, because obviously satellites, you need to consider the modulation, uh, bit rate errors, and et cetera. But we decided to use unit disk radio models because we really wanted it to uh, reflect existing uh, work and not only that we only really wanted to focus on uh, the exact latencies uh, so the same as what Handy did in his paper he mentioned that um, he, he only wants to he only wants the topology to be limited by obviously the speed of light and that's the same of what we wanted to do we didn't want to start incorporating modulation etc for the for the base model we it's due to the modulation of Omnet it's very easy to um, implement an APSK, like a, a, a more complicated model, which we actually have done, but we haven't really talked about in the paper because it hasn't fully been tested. And that's why we decided to use a more predictable and fast uh, model to start with. In terms of the routing, we created a new uh, routing configurator. So it's very similar. It's built upon the IP, IPv4 network configurator uh, model by INET. Uh, which basically works for every x milliseconds of time a graph is built representing the current network topology so it basically treats it as static for that exact time uh, the ip addresses are then obviously automatically assigned uh, we have also done a little bit of link filtering to make it a little bit easier so rather than overhauling like 50 percent of INET, we decided to just do certain aspects within the the configurator uh, for example checking that certain links are valid making sure that um Satellites are part of the same inter-satellite link, so if they're not, it will basically dis disable the uh, link on the graph. Uh, and then the sh Dietra shortest path algorithm is run with link latency as a matrix to determine the shortest ra uh, route from every node. Um, but there, we did find there was quite a lot of disadvantage of uh, this because as the constellation sizes rapidly increased, um, so did the real time of the simulations. Um, 
So as shown here, uh, with early constellations, so if you do a constellation size of say 400 satellites, it's relatively fast and it doesn't really uh, matter how often you run the routing configurator. Um, I, I didn't mention it, but so the, the granularity at the top is basically how, long, how often you're running the, the routing algorithm. It's also how often the mobility is run as well, as you might as well sync these up. Um, as the larger constellation sizes um, become, so the 1,400, uh, if you update the routing every one second, it is hugely slower, um, which is a slight disadvantage. Um, it's not too bad at the minute. You can run most sim simulation models relatively not too bad of a time, depending on the, obviously the scale of the simulation. But um, as uh, SpaceX, uh, I think they want to get eventually like 22,000 satellites or something extremely large. If we ever wanted to test anything like this, the routing would definitely need to be um, improved and considered. And here is again how the granularity affects the results. Um, so if you run it more frequently, the uh, latencies will be a lot, uh, a lot finer and more accurate. Um, as the granularity of the configurator increases to say 15, um, the results do, do uh, slightly degrade. Um, but obviously for what we want it, just trying to figure out the latencies, it's still um, not too bad. Uh, but if we ever wanted to test anything such as actual existing transport protocols, it is definitely better to do it for a lower routing granularity. Otherwise you want to get um, unwanted results. Um, this is basically just a very simple constellation and how we can define it in Omnet and INET. Um, so if you see on the left, uh, we've basically got um, a laser satellite node and a ground station node. These uh, basically inherit from the OS3 modules and use all the, um, all the, all the needed simple modules from there. Uh, we've specified the unit disk radio medium model. Um, there's a there's a two transmitters that are custom made, which we we usually specify in the any file, but we could also specify here if needed. And on the right um, is showing the any file and how we can specify our own uh, our own simulation model basically on specific characteristics. So we decided to create our own orbital uh, models which worked with OS3. That allows us to specify the plane, set up per plane. There's other uh, characteristics that we can specify as well if needed, but it's basically allowed us to automatically generate any constellation we wanted and test all these different configurations, not just by Starlink, but also by other constellations such as OneWeb um, and Telesat. Uh, so this is that exact constellation shown there. Um, this is basically that and what it outputs using the automatically generated. Um, I'll show you the results in a minute. I've got a couple of videos of showing it working and how it works, if so it clears up a bit. Um, so I'm going to talk about results really quick. Um, so this is the paper I mentioned before by Handley. So he, with his um, simulation model in Unity, um, he tested the latencies between London and New York, um, the round trip times. Um, and as you can see, it's quite variable. Um, so the intersatellite links, which is this bottom one here, it's a lot less variable. Um, every time there's a hop, so every large line, that's basically when the path is changing uh, orbital plane. So it's hopping to the next orbital plane. As a satellite gets out of distance, it means that that is no longer the best path and it needs to change to the next orbital plane, which causes this hop. Uh, for the ground relays, the lower ground relays, so the ground relays are slightly more reflective of what we've got today because the intersatellite links have only start, just started to be deployed, so there's, they're not like the majority of the constellation yet. Um, yeah, it's still quite variable, but even still in comparison to the current internet, which is at the very top, it's still um, uh, very good. Uh, if you see here the Great Circle Fiber, this is a... It's not really feasible, but it's basically saying how you can basically tightly wrap a fiber optic cable around the world. And that's basically what it do. And even the grime really still compete with this. The only downside is the variability, which may be an issue for uh, transport protocols, but this is definitely something we're, we're literally exploring um, at the moment. Uh, this is my, this is, this is a simulation model doing the exactly same route, but this is for ground relays. Um, so this is showing it's working. Um, so the uh, satellites are moving, and as they're moving, the routing algorithm is finding the best path, updating it. Um, as the satellites go into range in the middle, it's choosing the better paths and working out the uh, correct round trip times.
And this is my results. Uh, this is directly outputted by Omnet, uh, which is a replication of Hadi's results. So as you can see, we're basically getting almost exactly the same results with the simulation model. Um, as mentioned before, this is strictly the, uh, the, the link latencies with the speed of light. There's nothing like modulation, et cetera, but uh, this is very easy to incorporate. Uh, this is another one of the papers that we wanted to reproduce. So this is um, an experiment of one-way latency between DC and Washington, DC and Frankfurt. Uh, again, it's quite variable, um, specifically between the 30 and 35 millisecond range, uh, which can be an issue, but we wanted to explore this further using our simulation model. Uh, this is the inter-satellite link route of uh, the simulation model. Uh, basically showing, showing how it's uh, going across a single orbital plane, um, finding that best route um, and getting um, similar round trip times. So this is um, not one way, which is why it's slightly more than uh, the previous results. And here is um, our results following that experiment. We used a higher granularity um, here um, because as a satellite, as the constellation size increased, we wanted to uh, we kept running the experiments. I mean, we have actually got a, an experiment where we run this with a lot lower granularity, uh, but I, I don't know why I, I didn't put this in here. But yeah, as you can see, the, the 25 to the power of two, that basically means that there's 25 orbital planes with 25 satellites per plane. Uh, so 35 to the power of two is 35 planes with 35 satellites per plane. Um, with the lower constellation sizes, there's huge variability, um, which can be, uh, as there's, a lot more hopping between orbital planes, which is causing this. Um, as the constellation size increase, the uh, variability decreases. Um, and obviously, this is quite a low constellation, especially of what they want to be. So um, at the minute, there is actually quite a lot of talk on, online about people saying there's, they keep cutting in and out of the um, of Starlink, because obviously you can actually um, buy your own terminals at the moment. Uh, but that's often caused by these large hops. Since they're using ground relays, it's uh, a lot more predominant. But as the constellations increase, um, showing from these results and the previous results, it is pro it's pretty much clear that the variability should largely uh, decrease. Uh, so the, this is the these are the GitHub repositories if ever, anyone ever wanted to try them out. So if you just wanted to try the base OS3 framework, so this is mainly just the mobility. Um, the framework is here. It works for the most recent INET and Omnet versions. And this is the, um, the SASAT constellation model um, here. They've got the same examples as you've shown before, if you wanted to try them out. Um, so the main next steps are, we really wanted to improve the routing computation. Um, at the minute, we're actually evaluating existing uh, data transport protocols and trying to develop new data transport protocols for using the simulation model. Um, which is perfect for the constellation size. So we're not doing too much for the routing, but as the constellations increase, we definitely need to consider improving the routing computation. Uh, Handley with his Unity model, he does some like game mechanics to speed it up. Obviously we can't really do that considering the difference in environments. So we need to think of alternate solutions to that. Uh, yeah, that is mainly it. If anyone's got any more, if anyone's got any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. Any questions, anyone? I don't, I don't mind. I mean, even if it's very generic, I, I don't mind too much. Uh, I had had a, a generic question to this uh, satellite constellations. Yeah, no worries. Um, and you, you said that it is, the target is to replace the internet backbone yep. at the satellite constellation. It is, are there calculations or, or something like this, how many satellites you need to 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 reach this goal to replace the whole ground-based internet backbone with satellite constellations? Yeah, I mean, there's not been too many uh, things looking into that, as there's not a lot of uh, there's not a lot of ways on people can test this, um, which is why one of the reasons I want to do a simulation model. But just judging from our results alone, it seems that around under two thousand, which is where we're at the minute is almost just enough to be okay, but I think 2000 plus is where the variability 
basically is non-existent, which allows it. Ah, to okay, be... but but that's just that you have uh, uh, um, you have uh, um, a twenty-four connect twenty-four hour connection to a satellite. Yeah. Uh, to ha also have two everyone on Earth to have two hundred Mbit per second speed over this satellite network. Are the satellites beefy enough to to support this? Uh, yeah, that, that, the that is... The that hardware that is built on ground for this and, uh, and the internet exchange points, that, that, that they are very beefy. Mm. And, and I, 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 am, I, I am not sure if, if, if these small satellites are able to really replace this ground-based internet backbone. Yeah, I mean, this is another thing that's unfortunately quite speculative as I think Starlink themselves, they don't, they haven't really given much information on the mm. capacities of all these satellites. Yeah. But, uh, if you see on this slide, I mentioned the only thing they have mentioned is that um, it would reach multiple terabits per second. But apart from that, they've not really given too much mm. information away. Yeah. Um, but obviously, as we get more information, we can start testing out on these models mm. pretty easily and uh, see how they work. Um, but at the minute, it's mostly speculative. Yeah. It's, it's 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 very very interesting development there and and, uh, and I'm also following this because I'm very interested in this well mm. at the, not in research terms but in in, in, in private interest terms but um, yeah very interesting we will see the question. what will happen <laughs> yeah yeah we will see <laughs> any other questions yeah yeah uh, do you think uh, it would make sense to uh, probably port or move some parts of the OS3 framework into INET on long term? I mean, that's more or less basically just uh, a mobility module yeah. model. And uh, I'm not sure how, how specific they are to the actual, I mean, it's just two modules, so probably it would make sense to, to migrate those modules and have a satellite mobility module also directly in INET. Do you think that makes sense or it would make more sense to actually have it as a separate module? Um, sorry, so was- Yeah, yeah, you... yeah. I just, I, I've used to play with, with the OS3 and also was in contact with the original author. Mm. And, and also the fact that it was using curl to download uh, satellite data and things like that. So that was not really um, so much fit for the, uh, for experimenting. So it's, it's definitely uh, applaudable that you got rid of the, uh, or make it more configurable or usable for the, for, the, for actually running uh, repeatable simulations on that. And do you think it would make sense to actually somehow merge this on long-term into INET? Yeah, um, I actually think that would be a pretty solid uh, view of it because I think when we was developed, when we was trying to figure this out, a, a lot of our issues was with Kel itself, um, and that's why we decided to do this as well. Um, so, and it's pretty easy to remove Kel now. Now we've done this. Um, technically, the only reason we'd uh, use the TLE data is just for visual purposes, basically. Um, that you can use it for communication modeling, but you can easily replicate that with the automatic generation. Um, and like I said, it literally is only mobility modules. Um, so it's very easy to move these into the INET, and I think that would probably be a better um, way to do it, honestly. Uh -huh. And regarding routing, you said, uh, sorry, I just jumped uh, in yeah, mid, uh, mid session that you said that you were using actually or reusing the, the, the IPv4 configurator right now. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, do you think it would make sense to create some kind of specific routing protocols like, because 
obviously you are routing in a geographic terms. So some kind of routing protocol, which takes uh, into account locally the, the location of the satellite. So you would somehow uh, use something like, I want to send this packet towards Europe from the US hmm. or whatever. So not, not using this kind of uh, routing table based uh, routing protocol, but rather something like, well, I know this is intended to be to Europe, so let's route it that way. And uh, probably in that case, the routing algorithm themselves would be much more efficient because right now you have a kind of global routing yeah, exactly. decisions. And this is probably not how the, uh, or I don't know actually, uh, but probably this is not how the actual satellites are routing. Yeah. I mean, obviously there is not a central authority who is dispatching and changing all the routing tables every time. So do you think it makes sense in future to, to play also with different geography-based routing protocols? Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, I, I mentioned at the start, I think our main focus was just to, similar to existing papers, was just to look at the link latencies. That's why we decided mm -hmm. to do quite a very simplistic routing. Um, that, that way we could focus on the other aspects. Um, but yes, I think if uh, by doing different routing protocols, um, it definitely would be possible um, and probably better, like you said, it would speed it up quite a lot. Um, one thing we implemented this, I didn't really anticipate the amount of time it would take to rebuild the topology for like so many satellites. Um, so if there's a way to increase the speed of this, it would uh, definitely be um, a good solution. Mm -hmm. Is uh, SpaceX or others, are, are they open about how they route? Um, no, they're not. That's another thing that is quite expected. Okay. Um, People like Handley, if you uh, read their papers, they're trying to speculate on ways to, um, because obviously with this, with uh, the way as Omnet is event driven, we can basically technically pull the simulation, do the routing all in the background and ignore um, the live uh, information. But if we're doing the routing in an actual, in a real life environment, um, a lot of, uh, I think there's a bit of speculation that they would do it slightly in advance as they know the positions, they can calculate the positions and then do it, um, say, I think, 20 seconds in advance so they know where they're going to be and then work it well like that mm -hmm. um so if you use this knowledge you probably could try to figure out a, a routing protocols with uh inet that would uh, replicate a similar behavior mm Do you know of any plans that they want to incorporate different constellations? Because um, as long as they just have their SpaceX constellation and you just use this SpaceX infrastructure, they can do what they want and they don't have to be open standards for routing or some incorpor incorporation. But just the, on, on Earth, you have the, your autonomous systems that, that are well, some, do some kind of BGP routing or something like this, and they have to have this standard to, to incorporate with the other autonomous systems. And do you know of any plan that they, because if, if, if now four different providers want to get us to use uh, satellite constellations for internet, and they don't incorporate, then we have four times more satellites than we need for. For, for, for this yeah i mean i think that is one thing i think they're all they're very competitive and i don't even think they want to incorporate each other's constellations i think they try to make it very standalone um i mean a lot of the, some constellations they're trying to make it so i think a couple of, they're trying to do different uh roles i think starlink are trying to base they're trying to market it as this new internet service provider um for the entire world um i think mm -hmm. other companies are trying to do it a lot lo uh, lower scale um i think there's Amazon's constellation as well, which they're trying to do, uh, which I, I think they're trying to compete with Starlink as well. 
Um, but they are very competitive in nature. It doesn't seem like there there's any discussions about incorporating the satellites uh, mm -hmm. together, which is quite annoying because, as you said, there's far too many satellites in mm -hmm. space, and there's a lot of discussion discussion in the filings about collisions, uh, abstract like um, view from the sky um, by like seeing all mm -hmm. these satellites. And I think if they don't decide to incorporate, um, there'll be far too many satellites um, orbiting the Earth. If the, and there's quite a lot already, which is um, quite um, weird when you actually see how many there are already encompassing the entire world. So I'll probably give it another couple of minutes. If anyone wants to ask any questions, feel free to throw them at me. Um, and then uh, we'll probably just go back to the, the main room uh, and see, uh, just wait there for a bit until the next session. Okay, the next session is scheduled for one o'clock, so. Oh, okay, okay. Don't wait in the room. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Right. Thanks for letting me know. No problem. Okay, I'll wait here till 5-2, and then I'll, I'll, I'll probably leave, and I guess I'll see everyone at the next session after that. Yeah, has someone got a question? Oh, are they just clapping? Oh, I thought he was putting the hand up then. I was like, okay, my bad. Okay, I'll stop the recording. Maybe somebody wants to ask a question that doesn't want to be on the record. Yeah, no worries. Right. <laughs> 